Um, in the spoken world world, you know, there's the competitive um, slamming, and I don't really, I'm not a slammer. I don't write to be competitive. And so it's just understanding that my poetry, not to say that not all of it is a gift, but I write to heal. You know, my words, when I perform it as many different times, it's a healing for me, and I've had so many people come up to me and say, that touched me, that changed me, and that's why I do it. This first piece that I'm going to do for you tonight is called Black Is. Um, just with all that's going on in the society and the media and the world right now about colorism and racism and just all of it. It's, it's, it's had me down this week, but I wanted to revisit this piece. Um, I wrote this in college with a group of my friends for Black History Month and, you know, black is beyond February for us. It's every day. It's I, I don't know what it's not like to be black. You know, I'm proud of it. And so I wanted to share this piece, you know, if whatever nationality, ethnic, ethnicity that you are, just, just own that and, and know that that is a part of you, but then that also makes you human, and then that also makes you, even deeper than that, makes you a spirit. So this is Black Is. Black is more than just a color. Black is my native tongue, Krobo. Black is my hair pressed, my head wraps, and my body adorned in African beads. Black is the very thing that I was created to be. You see, black is an art form of expression. It's the sound of muddy waters, Mahalia Jackson, hymns, psalms, bloody palms, and two raised fists. You see, black is the many nights that I too spent crying because I too had been placed on the black list. You see, black is the land of Somalia where my great grandfather ruled. Black is the nights over the West African shore. You see, black is the dancing, the movement of my hips to the words that came from Ducky Lube and Mr. Marley's lips. You see, black is an evolution, it's a revolution. Black is America. You see, black is my name, Naki Akrobeto. Black is the God in the heavens that I serve above. Black is loving you and black is definitely loving me. So as the drums beat and the beats drum, I will run towards my blackness Desiring to be showered by black, uplifted by black, empowered by black, because I'm, I'm so proud to be black. See, black is more than just a color. Black is my native tongue, Krobo. Black is my hair pressed, my head wraps, and my body adorned in African beads. Black is the very thing that I, Naki, was created to be. So, I say to you, Webster, add this version of black to your dictionary. Thank you. So, it started in eighth grade when I was in my science class and I was too focused on my notebook and not the Bunsen burner. And I was distracted and just, I liked, I liked English. I liked words, I liked putting words together. And I remember the first poem that I wrote, it was for my best friend at that time. Her name was Tiffany Gammon, her sister, Faith Gammon. And it was called Black Butterfly. And I remembered the reaction that she got from the poem and it just kind of took off from there. And I'm the only child with my mom and my dad and, you know, just spent many days and nights just, just writing. My dad helped me write this piece. He's not here, he was trying to come here, but he had another engagement. And anybody who knows me knows that I love, love, love my dad. And over the years, my dad has had the opportunity to really 
um, teach me to be proud of who I am, where I come from, our culture, and there's still things that I'm still learning, but um, Africa means so much to me. It's like when I walk off the plane and I take off my shoes, like I'm home, I'm home, and I miss it. And so I wrote a piece um, not too long ago called My African Creed, and it's just, it's, it's, my, it's words that I want to pour into people who hear it to understand the beauty of that continent, beauty of that place. It's just an amazing, amazing place. And I always say, if I had enough money, I would take everybody with me, just so you can experience it once. There's something that happens when you fly over the Atlantic. It's just a trans transformational. It's just, it's a beautiful experience. So um, I wanted to share this piece called My African Creed. Secrets buried beneath the sands that cover the ocean's floor. Waves that wash tears upon every coast and silent shore. If you quiet the mind long enough, then you can hear the chains and the moans. Proverbial chants and praises that were once known as familiar voices in harmonic songs, dialects, a melting pot of 2,000 languages, warriors and empresses, queens and kings, a continent made of infinite great beings, history books written to tell half-truth, to erase memories of the old and to mislead our youth. The only way to know where one is going is to know where one has been to enlighten the masses of what it truly means to be an African. 54 independent nations collectively joined by borders that make us more alike than we are different. Oh, my continent Africa, the only continent massive in its size that stands out fierce like a gun when tilted to its side. We are united in the universal truth that our home is a sacred land. The genesis of every mineral and natural resource given by God's hand. Gold, diamonds, copper, just to name a few. Exploited because of our riches, a reminder never to forget what our ancestors have endured through. Beginning of the century, we had Timbuktu as a renowned center of learning. We pray that destiny will be on our side so that wars that have plagued us will give way to peace. And may our leaders realize that our countries are not their properties. See, may we thrive with abundance of food and education and resources, even protected from the ignorant and evil spiritual forces that linger from the corruption of others. May we all unite together and lead by being examples of how to love one another. Financially, shall we be able to sustain our own and develop the infrastructures that we call home? Free from foreign manipulation, a truth of our mother Africa that will never be forgotten and never be unknown. By the legacies we each choose to leave, may the spirit of our dear Africa continue to blossom by the words I plant in each of us as a seed. May we live and die by this creed. Watu Wazuri, Watu Wazuri. Long live Africa, one people, one nation, one love, my African creed. Thank you.
My dad is from Ghana, West Africa. My mother's from West Virginia. I had only had the opportunity to meet my grandmother once. And the second time um, that I went back to Ghana was actually for her funeral. And I was determined to get there. It was just like I had been gone for far too long. It had been nine years. And to me, nine is the number of transition. So I felt like there was a lot going on in my life and I needed to go back home. And when I went for her funeral, um, it was just a beautiful experience to realize that there's a missing part of my life that is there back at home at Ghana. I need to return there, that it's gonna really transform my writing. And while I was in the airport actually to fly back here to the States, I heard in my spirit that my, in my grandmother's passing, she had given me that gift to be able to come back home and to realize that through my po poetry, I'm, I'm bridging the gap between the whole um, notion of you know, being an African versus an African-American. It's like, I am, I am that middle, I'm that blend. So that is what I choose to, to send out in that message. And so that was the gift and the epiphany that I had at the airport. I'm here to bridge the gap. Everybody here is just a huge, huge part of my life. And you've all blessed me in so many different ways, whether I've known you for five seconds or I've known you for five years, 10 years and you've, you are all a product, or I am a product of all of you, because you've all sewn into my life. And so, I'm actually, I like freestyling, and kind of want to do this today. I'm not gonna do the last piece that I was gonna do, I'm gonna do a different one, and it's called um, In My Past Life. And it speaks to um, the woman who I feel like I've always been, and who God is constantly reminding me of who I am, not discovering, but being reminded of who I am. And, um, yeah, so just kind of how you felt. Yeah, just play something. <laughs> In my past life. In my past life. In my past life, I was a wife. I was an empress, queen, warrior, esteemed, revered and respected, loved and protected, worshiped and adored, valued and so much more. In my past life, in my past life, I co-created the clan. I bore sons who were leaders and daughters who were spiritual healers. They ran miles to govern the villages and prayed and made pilgrimages. We were stars amongst the multiverse, shining, fiery bright. Passionate, comedic, connected souls, spirits that flowed, infinitely illuminating lights. In my past life, in my past life, I died seven times, yet I still lived. I co-created a language, and I governed a community that knew no sin. I'd pin stanzas under the moonlight, and in my worst days, I would pray and turn it into a blessed night. I wrote my future. I foretold my past. I laughed and then danced, smiled and then passed, memories onto my seed so that they too could spring forth and bear fruit for the world to feast. I anointed my feet with oils and lathered my bodies with flowers scented with power, transcending the hours in my past life. I was the princess of poetry, ruler of my throne, gifted and known all over the world, men, women came together, exchanging love, trading passion. See, no, this is not a dream, but a reality, birthing divinity in my past life. Thank you.
Just waiting. And time for accompanying them.